greetings once again. I want you to know that um, I didn't say it in the first one, but I'm going to say it now. I'm glad to have this opportunity to express the message of the kingdom on this video and that you get an understanding of what the kingdom is all about. Many of the principles that a lot of religions have are kingdom principles. Once again, they, they call them religious principles, but they're kingdom principles. And I'm, what I'm not saying is that people who don't claim kingdom are lost. No, I'm not saying that. Not at all. The kingdom is the government. Religion is religion. Let me give you an example. Baptist is a denomination. Christianity is a religious, it's a religious term. And that's what only most people learned. I, I was back in that day, too. I was, uh, at that time, back in, the, uh, uh, in New York, and um, I was with this organization called the Church of God in Christ, a denomination, and another church, uh, the Church of God. Uh, that's what I was ordained and licensed in, as, in terms of this world. Um, but um, I learned something, and I watched, and I was a young minister at that time. And um, what I did was I, I traveled with a lot of these, a lot of the preachers, and one of the pastors uh, took me in his, his, uh, in his wing. He was re really grooming me. And um, I saw a lot of things that I didn't agree with, and I couldn't, I didn't have an answer for. And what it was is that, I looked at, I would go to some churches, and all the churches that I went to was primarily, it, we went to, we had to go to speak to other churches and whatnot, and they all, what we call African Americans, churches of color. I went to a lot of them across, especially in New York and Virginia. But I realized something. They had a lot of denominations. The Baptists had the Baptists, but they had black Baptists. And then they had what they call white Baptists. And then the Presbyterians, a lot of them was white Presbyterians and black Presbyterians. You know, and the Pentecostal, you had them white Pentecostals, the black That's not God. The kingdom of God are those who are filled with his spirit. That's the kingdom. And see, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to bring us to the, 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 the natural when he comes back in his full kingdom. But right now, we're citizens. Those of us who have the spirit of God, the governor inside them, we are citizens of the kingdom. And what do I mean by governor? The Holy Spirit governs our lives because we submit our lives to him. That's what it's all about. Many people don't know. They think the Holy Spirit is an it or a thing. It's not. He's real. And Jesus says he's real. He used the term male. He. Well, I could say a lot of things about that, but I want you to understand something. There's only one race, and this is what the devil have, this, have done to the world. You see, the devil is his, the world is his playground because he know that in due time, he's, he's going to lose. He, he's gone. So meanwhile, he's really pressing on to guide you away from the kingdom message. I've never heard so many quote, unquote, what they call Christians. Everybody calls themselves a Christian today. You go to Hollywood, you lie, you're back. You know, everybody. You know, the principles. When you get married, you don't, you don't, you know. Nowadays, they call it, we're talking about principles now. Friends with benefits. They get married and stay before they get married, they live together for two or three years. Then they get married. And not long after that, they divorce. God has a standard. And a lot of 
the 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 the, the world system standards is inside of quote unquote what they call Christianity. Now see, Christianity is a stench to me. Not the people, the word, the name. Why? Because everybody classifies themselves. That if they go to church, they call themselves a Christian. That doesn't constitute you for knowing the Lord. It doesn't. You have to be filled with his spirit and the Holy Spirit. And many of them, they, don't, they have a spirit, but I doubt very much if it's home, holy. That's my opinion when I said I doubt. We're living in an age now that everybody, the, if the devil wants to control people, he does it through fear. And that's what's going on in this world today. Today. You know what? And I, 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 my wife and I was discussing something the other day. Uh, matter of fact, this morning, like yesterday morning. And the Lord gave me to see, it's going to be this thing with this crisis that has become worldwide. It's not as what many appear to be, but it will separate the real people, the real saints of God, from those who are just mouth servants. You know, they, they give a lot of lip service. Uh, Jesus mentioned that too, by the way. He said, there's many, uh, once again, let me go and take you to uh, Matthews. Let's see. Okay. Matthew, the 15th chapter. I always like to stay with the word and uh, show you what is, what's being said and what's being done. Because um, if you have any questions, and by the way, many of you who are listening, if you have any questions, by all means, you know, hey, if you don't know, ask me, challenge me. I, I, I love it. I want you to understand the, the significance of the kingdom of God. It's important. Going to church. Did you know you? it's not required? God never required you to go to church. He required you for one thing. And I'm going to go to get John, the third chapter, the 16th verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That if you believe in him, he'll give you everlasting life. If you believe in him. Now, the purpose of going to attending a religious institution, or let me put that aside, a gathering under a building, under a pavilion, is so you can fellowship with one another, not be entertained by a choir or a band or a lead director, a choir director. It was so you can encourage one another. That was the purpose. Encourage one another, because when you're out in the week and you're going through all this stuff, especially now with social media and what's happening, man, you the, the, the enemy, the evil one, many people blaming one another, but it's the devil that's doing it. He's allowing. People who are there are contrary to, don't know who they are, whether they're men or women, they have permitted that spirit to come into their lives. That's, that's, that's the deal. You have to stand firm on the word. Firm. And when you do that, then you live according to his word. <laughs> He'll empower you with the Holy Spirit. That means you submit your life to him and you take your time. Because a lot of you, like myself at one point, you have to get rid of that religiosity, the tradition, those customs. You like, don't like people. And get out of your head. <laughs> get out of your head that God doesn't favor one color amongst another color. Since I've been, since this, this crisis, have, I've seen so many quote, unquote, black individuals attack white individuals. That's not God. That's religion. That's demonic. Understand that. He loves you. 
In the kingdom, there's all nationalities. And once you come under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit of God, then you have one culture. Are you feeling me here now? One culture. That's the kingdom culture. Those are kingdom principles. Yeah, I'm from New York. I'm not from here, South Carolina. I was raised in New York, New York City. I thank God he did because he trained me there to be bold, bodacious, stand up, speak for the word. It doesn't matter who you are. Don't let your skin be dictate to you your salvation or your righteousness or your superiority. Look, when God separated the people, he did not do it through color. He did it through language. Now you go, for, your, for those of you who don't do your homework, I'm going to give you some homework. Go to Genesis 11 chapter and you'll see. He separated the people through language, not through color. Color has nothing to do with it. Jesus came in the body he came to to identify with his people. Because like I said in the last article if you look in 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 in, in matthews uh the 15th chapter and the 24th verse he didn't come for the the world per se he came directly for the jews his father sent him for that that was his purpose but he had an assignment for another, another individual by the name of Saul, whose name was changed to Paul. Now you'll find that in Acts, the ninth chapter. He was the apostle for the Gentiles. Now what do I mean by the Gentiles? Talking about those cats, that, like I said before, they're Greek, Italian, German, French, uh, Polynesian, whatever. We were all drafted in and we were to be accepted by our faith in him. We weren't back then. We didn't see Jesus back then. We didn't witness the miracles. But by faith, we believe. That's why I say, your faith in the kingdom. See, faith has to have an object. And don't start condemning the people in the world because they're in the world. You can't change them. And if you, you can talk, tell them the word. If someone wanted to know, you can tell them the word. You know, your life will have to speak for you. My wife used to cut the grass. I don't do cutting grass. I did a little bit and I couldn't do cutting grass. I'm a, I'm a city boy. I ain't cutting no grass. I got, but when I saw my wife cutting the grass, I said, well, I don't let her cut grass. I'm going to cut the grass. But I got tired of cutting grass, and I was glad when she said, honey, I can't cut no more grass. I was glad. You know why? Because I asked my father, father, provide us with us, me, to be able to pay the lawn more because I ain't cutting no grass. He did so. Now, the life I live the individual who cuts the grass wants to know about the kingdom, not about religion. He specialized in that. Not about religion, about the kingdom. You have to live in such a that your life speaks for you. I didn't tell him about the kingdom. No, your life has to speak for you on a constant basis. Constant. Live that life, whether you're in the UK, Papua, Papua New Guinea, whether you're in uh, the U.S., Guatemala, Germany, France, Greenland, uh, those are the places that are getting the kingdom message. So he, God ordained me for that. I ain't talking about those papers that the religion gave. No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Lord God ordained my wife and I for that, to write. I don't know when my father's coming, but I'm going to stick with the program that he gave me. I'm not going to try to expand. We don't try to get rich. <laughs> That's a laugh. That's a joke right there. Because Jesus never said that he'll get us rich. And God never said he'll get us rich. No, he said 
He'll provide for our needs and that he has done. He has never failed us yet. See, some of you things may, some of you individuals may say, well, you know, uh, I asked the father for certain things and he never failed me. There was a storm here the other day and I said, Lord, it was coming, it's touching all upstate. I said, Father, please, I don't want the lights to go out. And it started to come down and all of a sudden it stopped in just a little rain. A little rain. Now my wife could not, I don't take nothing for granted because that storm was supposed to come right through here, but it didn't. When you trust the king, when you trust him, when you please him, when you please him, how do you please God by obeying his word? Now all those books you got, I got a lot of books over here. I don't pay much attention to them. But I know how to differentiate between God's word and the Holy Spirit's guidance. Once you learn that, man, I mean, hey, you will have to have faith in his word and trust in his word. So we, as quote unquote Gentile, should really be shouting for joy because eternal life is a heck of a lot better than eternal damnation. And that's what would happen to us if Jesus didn't give us that invitation. You should be praising God every day, thanking him. Kingdom life, living in the midst, and this is a fallen world. Did you know Jesus came in the midst of a fallen world? From the day Adam was disobedient, there was a problem. You must learn that in God, if you trust in him, you don't have to have a tradition or custom. See, Jesus addressed the Jews back then on their territory, in their customs, in their mannerism. But we accept Jesus by faith. I want you to say, I'm going to listen to this. Remember when he spoke to Nicodemus? You remember that? Now, for y'all, those of you, turn to the third chapter of uh, John. Let me tell you something. You want to know why I say the, the, the Holy Spirit is very important in the principle. Many religions have kingdom principles. They call it religious principle, but the kingdom principle. Because the king spoke and that's it. See, when the king speaks, you obey. Listen. Therefore, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things, do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Now, check this out. He came by night. Why? Because he's been embarrassed. All these guys, he's, he's a ruler. And he's coming to Jesus. See, let me tell you something. Most people, popularity don't mean nothing because people are like sheep. Jesus categorized them as sheep, like sheep. And they follow. If you want to rule people, control people, do it through fear. They'll all come together. And most people are afraid of dying. Dying to me isn't happening. And my wife and I, we was talking about that today. About, is this an option for me? Am I going to die? No, no, no. See, my body's gone, but I'll live for eternity. Why? Because I believe in his word. It's not an option for me to, to, to you know, it's not an option. I'm going to live. The body's going to deteriorate. It's doing that now as I get older. But listen, listen what uh, uh, um, Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again by born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know what born again means? It's not a religious term. Born again, reborn. Just like you were born physically, but your spirit is reborn with the spirit of God. You get it? 
reborn with the spirit of God. It's not a religious term. Your spirit must be born because that you, that spirit is going to live eternity, whether it's damnation or eternal life. Now, I, 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 I'm going to have to go now because I, I got the sign. But listen to me. Your faith in his word. That's why I is stressed all the time. Stay in his word. Study his word. Talk to the father. See, I don't call him God. I call him my father because that's who he is. And, and as far as having an earthly father down here, I didn't I had a seed don't, don't have a father. Never had a father. It's a shame. A lot of us, and I don't feel bad about that. My wife said, you shouldn't feel bad about that, honey, because look where you are now. And, 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 and if you had it, he could have taught you wrong, and she's right. Hey, I love you all. I love you all. I have to go now, but I want you to know, you pray for me, and I pray for you. Now, those who know how to pray, keep this in mind. Your faith in the king, his word, is your greatest asset in the kingdom. Until next time, you be encouraged in the word.